I'm a riding down that winding trail, poking along like a hot spring snail. Gonna get down, cut me a willow switch. Pack horse jigging close behind, round that steep incline will wind. Gonna have to readjust that diamond hitch. I started living in 1948 with my husband Ed at a little old cabin that, the Bow Summit cabin that looks, it was just the same as this one, the Windy Cabin, exactly the same. Quite a culture shock for me, it really was. Ed was so happy he got his first district, he jumped out of his big 4x4 four four truck that he had picked me up in, uh, at Lake Louise, and he said, well, this is home. I said, you gotta be kidding, Ed. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, it looked more like a storage shed to me. Ed Carlton, Dorothy's husband, was a warden during the district era. The warden service was started in 1909, and it was Howard Sibold, the first chief park warden, who established the original district system. He is shown here wearing grizzly bear chaps. From 1910 until the 1970s, wardens were each responsible for one area of land in the park, their district. Each warden lived for months on end in a simple cabin in their district. Retired warden Scott Ward gives us a tour of Windy Cabin, one of the earliest cabins in the Canadian Rocky Mountain parks. Uh, when I started in the park, most of the warden cabins were like this. They've, some of them have since been rebuilt, torn down, new cabins built. But there's still a few like this still out in the backcountry. The Cuthead Cabin, the Clearwater Lakes Cabin are still the same vintage as this and still being used today. Shanty, this is a typical in example. Old shanty town. The roof is so slanty, it nearly touches the ground. But my tumble-down shack, by an old railroad track, like a millionaire's mansion, is calling me back. I'd give up a palace if I were a king. It's more than a palace, it's my everything. There's a queen waiting there with a silvery crown in a shanty in old shanty town. Don't you think that's a reminder of my little old cabins? While cabin life is often romanticized, day-to-day -day living provided many challenges. Well, that was a shock too, and I, of course I saw that the first day that we came in here. And I turned to him and said, what is that? What is that? He said, that's a stove. That's the oven. What? I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe that. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, I'm going to have to do some baking on that. How do I do that? The cross-cut saw back in, was used up there for putting up firewood in the old days. Just right up there, cross-cut saw, has a handle just like that, for one at each end. So I got at one end, and he got at the other end, and he would say, now this has to be very rhythmic. We have to be in, in unison. So he said to me, what you do is go, to me, to you, to me, to you. To me. Warden's wives during the district era had an awful lot to contend with. Answering the phone was an important role for the warden's wife. The phones were a lifeline for the wardens and their families. Back in the 50s and 60s, they had the telephones system for communication. They had miles and miles and miles of telephone cables stretched between the trees. The district warden's job was to maintain, one of his jobs was to maintain that uh, telephone line. So if a tree fell down uh, and knocked the phone line out, sometimes he had 50 miles of phone line to ride on his horse or a snowshoe to try to figure out where the line went down. So it was a huge job maintaining that line. But with that line they could communicate to town and they could talk to each other in various warden cabins. When I started off uh, the district system had just ended and they had centralized and we did all our backcountry patrols on 10-day shifts. So you were still assigned a district, but it was just for the months, say from June through till or end of October, early November. And uh, you were out there for 10 day shifts, so 10 days on, four days off, and you just covered a, a big area. Uh, you weren't living out there year round. You got to go home to your family for your four days off. Women were introduced into the warden service in the late 1970s. All the guys are just, you know, they're just the guys I work with. I don't really think about it too much. It is definitely still a male-dominated outfit. Um, but yeah, it's never really been an issue for me. My sister and I worked together and another girl that was raised with us, Patty Cooper. We did a lot of packing together, so I was, <laughs> they were, we were all partners when it came to packing, so we were all just 
learned together, I guess, or worked together, and uh, they were as good a packer as I was. Some of them a little shorter, they couldn't reach up as high, but other than that, it was, it was just fine. Yeah, you drag a stump over to the side of the horse to tie the diamond hitch. Yeah. <laughs> Just knew what each other's doing without having to even talk to each other. And you know, Donnie and I can pack a horse in about probably a minute if we hustled. Let's see if the newer guys are just as fast. The diamond hitch was, and still is, the knot for horse packers in the warden service. It's such a feeling to be traveling these trails and in the same way that wardens were a hundred years ago. And I think that what a lot of people don't realize is that this is probably one of the last places where we're still using horses to the extent that we do. You know, the, the mountain national parks, particularly Banff and Jasper, have a horse program still where we're patrolling these big parks. The whole West used to be like that, and uh, this is really the holdout. Uh, you know, the national parks are where we still have grizzly bears, and the national parks, it's a large part of where we still have uh, a much more deliberate, slow way of traveling. Warden life's the life for me, riding high and semi-free, free as you can be. When you're riding for the feds, checking permits, cutting trail, counting game and mending rail, out here we don't care what the boss has said. When folks are stuck on a mountain face, to the helicopter we will race, hook up that sling rope underneath, adjust our harness, check with base, slow down and think it's not a race, it's the young ones from the east that give us grief. It's not all fun, there are hard days when the blizzards blow your breath away, when your toes are frozen into stirrup leather. Horses wallow in the snow, over passes we will go, while on patrol you cannot choose the weather. Warden life's the life for me, riding high and semi free, free as you can be when you're riding for the feds. Checking permits, cutting trail, counting game and mending rail. Well, here we don't care what the boss has said. Back in town, we'll wrestle down the trunks and tunnel mountain now and chase those elk and bear right off the street. There's a birdie in an attic roof, and now I feel just like a goof as a venture forth with an The people that I work with have been the best people I've ever met in my life and uh, really, you know, just the most fantastic work environment, uh, the best physical location to work in the world, really, and uh, really, I can't see myself doing any other job. Warden life's the life for me, riding high and semi-free, free as you can be when you're riding for the feds. Checking permits, cutting trail, cutting game and mending rail. Out here we don't care what the boss has said.